Welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to take a look on the new iOS 12 released earlier this week on the iPhone SE. We're also going to compare some of them with the last iOS update 11.4. First off I'll go into software update in settings to confirm I'm running iOS 12. Here we can also see the first new feature, automatic updates. If you activate it, iOS will be updated during nighttime when a new update is available and the phone is both charging and connected to Wi-Fi. We can also go into iPhone storage where we actually can see that we got back 400 megabytes compared to when we were running iOS 11.4. And if we go into battery, we can see a lot more information compared to iOS 11. But in better health that is new from iOS 11.4, it looks the same. We can also see that the percentage is still not available if you have a third party replacement battery as this one do. In settings we also have the new screen time. We can see how much and what we use on the phone, set app limits and more. You can see how many minutes you used for different apps today and the last 7 days. Another new feature is this. When you write, you can press and hold the spacebar and then use your finger as a cursor. Really handy when typing wrong. And if you see a word that you don't know what it means, maybe more advanced than this one, you can mark it and tap look up. In FaceTime in iOS 12, you will be able to have a group chat with up to 32 people. However, this is not included right now, but will be in a soon coming update. And now we also have the Measure app. It includes the spirit level that we had on iOS 11.2, but also this measuring tool. It says here 36 centimeters, so let's check. 37.5, so not far off. It could of course be my fault too. Stocks are redesigned. Here's how it looked before, and here is iOS 12. And in iOS 12, when you call an emergency call, your geographic position will be shared with them, a feature that actually can save lives. And now Siri is better than before. And even if we activate low power mode, we can still use the Hey Siri function, where on iOS 11 it told us you cannot. Now we can also use Siri to play a sound on other devices using the same Apple ID, which I don't have right now. Really handy if you can't find the device. You could kind of do the same thing in iOS 11, but then you had to open the app Find My iPhone, sign in. Wait a while, tap the device we're talking about and choose play sound, so it's done much easier now. The last new thing about Siri is the one that I think is the coolest, shortcuts. You can make your phone do a series of things through making a shortcut for it, set a trigger word and say it to Siri. In my case I set it to open this stock, which I by the way know nothing about. When reading a message, you can now tap the contact to call, FaceTime or get info. In iOS 11, we could not tap the name, but we did have this info button. And the music app should now be able to search for lyrics, but apparently it doesn't know I will survive or Bob Dylan. Do not disturb, now have presets in the control center. Just hold the icon. It did not exist in iOS 11, and in the settings on Do Not Disturb, we have this new bedtime mode. Calls will be silenced, lock screen will be dimmed, but you can still use alarm. Another new thing is the stacked notifications. In older iOS versions, you got one notification for everything that happened. Now all notifications from the same app will stack up, which makes much less clutter.
And on your photos, you can now use this markup tool to write or draw on a photo. This app in iOS 11 was called iBooks. Now it's just called Books. If you compare it to how it looked before, it's simpler and cleaner now. The Voice Memo app changed the logo. And now it's way more straightforward than be be before. Okay. And overall, the iPhone SE feels much more snappy and optimized. So if your question is, should I upgrade? The answer is definitely yes, I really think so. And that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching.